Hey, yo, what's up? This Disciple Marshall Occurrence Rain back up in this anti-Illuminati all day, anti-America all day, anti-Telepathy all day, anti-Witchcraft all day, anti-Gang Stalker all day. Yeah, so this message basically is going to be about um, if racism was gone, the next fight is is would be with white families. If racism was gone in America... The next fight will be white families. White families that are not racist, they just feel like they should fight for what their families established. So you see, it's all it's it's all hopeless when it comes to any other people who think they're taking over America, but white people. It's not gonna happen, bro. Because even if you get rid of racism. You still have white families who feel, hear this part, justly entitled to America. I know you have white entitlement. Then you have just entitlement. Another example is uh, reparations, if I'm saying that word right, for slavery. Compensation, Compensation for slavery. For our ancestors' work. That's just Entitlement, right? That's just entitlement. Reparations for slavery is, is just entitlement. Recompense for slavery is just entitlement. White families that feel that their family worked for this and they did is just entitlement. So you have a war after racism with just entitlement. See, this is the problem with when a when when an ethnicity comes and take over and they build and establish stuff. You can't say, "Well, hey, we want this now." <laughs> and so now you see why it's never going to go away because there's going they're not going to have this conversation honestly. So guess who has to do it? A man that figures it out that can speak to all of you. Because you would not accept it if they told you this. If a white person told you, well, our families work for this. As soon as they say that, you're going to say racism. But you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention. That's not racism. That's not racism. Racism is a person that doesn't like you based on your appearance. And because you are black or because you are Hispanic or Latino and, and, they, and they hate your what your appearances, your images, if you will, and your culture. When it is wrong, when it is when it is no reason to hate it. Is is hate on ethnicities without reason? Now there's now like I explained in videos before, you can bring hate on yourself. Oh yeah, you can bring you you, you can't holler racism, but racism is hate that you didn't bring on yourself. Cause ain't nobody perfect. You can bring hate on yourself. You can bring hate on yourself now. Let's get that understood. And that is not racism. If you're running around here killing, you don't think you can bring hate on yourself. So you can't bring hate on yourself, but you got people killing. That's not racism. We got a lot of different dynamics to talk about. That's why I'm making these videos. We got a lot of different dynamics and aspects and perspectives and realities to talk about. But the bottom line is when you get done fighting racism, now you got to fight white, just white entitlement because their forefathers justly to a degree made America what it is. What you enjoy comes from what uh the foundation of what you enjoy comes from white families coca-cola all these different companies you can put a couple black people in the mix and talk about how they did this that and the third but you know what i mean for the most part for the most part most of these corporations and things that you enjoy whether it's the pizza whether it's the the, the hamburgers you eat all of it came from white families wendy's that restaurant is a white family. 
That's why you got the white girl on there. That's a real person. Which she obviously came from a white family. So you've enjoyed Wendy's over the years. And this is a this is a mammoth corporation. And this corporation is a white family. So you think that it's just cool for... Do you, th- th- this is a perfect example. You think it would be cool if uh, Wendy's just say, well, well, because black people are here, I'll just give up my dad's corporation to you. Just because y'all are here, I'll let y'all do whatever y'all want to do with Wendy's. Do you think that's going to happen? No, you know what's going to happen? You're going to remain a worker for Wendy's. Boy, that's a seven hour. You're not going to take over America. You're going to remain a worker for America. That's what I'm trying to show you. And and, and you don't know any better. So I got to give you more. I got to show you that outside of racism, you still have white families. They ain't going to they ain't going to fight you in the name of racism. They're going to fight you in the name of their white families. Boom. Oh, they ain't going to tell you that because you ain't going to understand. You're not going to understand. So you need somebody like me to tell you because many white people hear this and start crying. It's the truth. This is how we feel. Somebody's articulating it. I'm not joking. Somebody finally gets it because you thought it was all racism and really half of it was white families feeling like, hey, what, what, what are we, chop suey? White people are now all of a sudden chop suey and we just, we built this country to what it is. Now you see what you're dealing with. And so now you've got black cause that's ignorant of that or, or reflects ignorance of that. And, and all you talk about is racism and racism and families and racist families. What about white families like Wendy's? A founder of a restaurant that is, is is made millions. He wasn't he wasn't racist. What about him and all these countless other uh, corporations that were not that are not racist? What about them? What about them? So what do you say in that case? What do you say in that case? Oh, just take over my just. As far as you, how you're addressing it, as far as families here, this racism and taking over and doing this, and they should be overthrown. What you say to right? What do you say to corporations and business that businesses that were never racist and that shouldn't be overthrown? What you say to them? What do they do? What do all these corporations do that are not racist? You think they're gonna just let you sit back and take over? It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be personal. It's gonna be business. It's not going to be personal. It's going to be about their families. In other words, it's not going to be about you being black. It's going to be about them staying where they're supposed to be. Think about it. If you was white and 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 all your families were threatened, what are you going to do? It's not racism. But you can't you can't have someone have a uh, uh, honest conversation because guess what you have you have black entitlement too where you just feel like you're entitled to the whole white family empire come on now come on you feel entitled to it don't you you're entitled to portions possibly but come on bro. If, if somebody worked for your business, you think they deserve to have the whole thing? That's ridiculous. Yeah, you work for us. You help build it, but we can't. It's ridiculous to think you can have it. Think about you start a business and you work in the business. You have workers. Let's just say you was it was a racist white person. They have workers. You think as time evolved, they're going to let them have that corporation? No, we'll give you money. But it's ridiculous to think you can have the empire that our family have. Now you see what I'm saying. See, the, see, now you believe the Holy Ghost leads me for real. You need to hear this and understand this because you have more than two. You have more than one war going on. You don't only have racist wars going on. You have white families that feel justly entitled to be in rule in America. Now, hold that thought.
Now let's go to Africa. Mentally. White families come to Africa. All of Africa. They start out as slaves. They fight for power. Some of their leaders get assassinated by black, by Africans. Eventually, they get in politics. Eventually, they influence the culture. The whites influence. I'm just, I'm just making up a, a illustration, an analogy, an analogy, where black people are in rule with black families, and white people are submitted to that rule. White people come over there in Africa. They get in politics, they get the music going, they're singing, they're dancing, they're getting the culture going, everything. But but it comes now to a point now where you're starting to threaten white families' power. So you think African families that have been there for 10 generations are going to let white people just rule over Africa? Now, you don't have Africans build up the whole country now, all of this time, and you think you're going to let white people come in and get their rights, and they may have went through slavery, they may have went through all they went through, but you think you're going to let them overthrow African families in Africa that have built a whole country? You think that you're going to let that happen? So would that be racism or would it be a fight for families to stay in their position, rightfully so, being that their families built up the country that you have and you enjoy? It would never happen in Africa. And I don't know why you expect black people to rule here when this is a white European country. Okay? Africa is what? A country, a continent, a continent ruled by Africans. Do you think, let me say it in plain English. Do you think white people are going to ever come and rule over Africa? It's not going to happen. So the next question is, is that racism? That you do not want white families to rule over Africa? Is that racism? It's not racism. It's where it's 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 keeping families in authority and power. And and honestly, white people should have been had this discussion because then you would have been able to uh rule more with 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 with, with some under with some pure uh perception of you or a just perception of you. You would have had someone had a just perception of you if you had explained the white family part. Your family's built most of this. This is what everyone here enjoys. This is what we have come to enjoy. What white families built. And you could talk about the worker part that Africans did and Hispanics and Latinos did, but it pales in comparison to the white family working part. It's not even comparable, bro. I'm talking about the foundation. I'm talking about the foundation. It's not even comparable. It's not comparable. So then who has the lion's share for real? Who deserves the lion's share? If a man works for something, he deserves what he has, right? So you can't snatch things from white family in the name of equality. That's a seven owl. You can't snatch it portions of America from white families in the name of equality in the name of anti-racism that's not going to work that's not going to work because they justly justly built up this country now you can say on the backs of slaves but still okay so then money is given but the whole empire wouldn't be so if there's if there's reparation, if I'm using the right word, reparations, or let's just say recompense, recompense for slavery, that still would not give you rights to the empire. It would give you recompense for your work, which would not be an empire. It would be a currency. 
It would be lump sums of currency and not established networks and empires. You, you there, and th- basically, you could not claim networks and in, in, in empires here. You could get work for work. You could get money for working the empires, but you couldn't get the empire. And so the empire consists of what here in America, white families, right? So how would you feel if you was in Africa and and you did you did work at white people? Let's just say you worked to white people as slaves. Okay, you did. You decide. Let's just say you in the right perfect situation. You decide. Okay, we gonna give them some money. We gonna give them some money. We gonna give them some money, and then that's the end of it. They still got the empires, and you gotta walk away. It's just like saying, "Okay, you work for us. Here's some money. Slam the door, boom." But what you gonna say? Hey, well, we want we want the building. We want all this business you got going. We want that too. In a just way, you could only receive, in, in, in the context of this situation, you could only receive money for what you literally did do. So if you work fields, you can't say, oh, okay, I need this building. You get money for working the fields. That's just like saying, okay, I go to McDonald's and I work my whole life for McDonald's and my family worked their whole life for McDonald's for nothing, right? The next generation could say, well, my family worked at McDonald's. We, we deserve this corporation called McDonald's. We should have the whole thing. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. And that's how white families look at you. Okay, you, we, can, we can give you money for your family working at McDonald's, but it's ridiculous to think you can have the corporation. It's not going to happen, bro. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see is that after racist wars, after race wars, you got white family wars. You got white family wars right after that. And you won't overcome that because it's just that they are entitled to this country when they had the corporations and you was the worker. They can pay for it. They can pay you out. They can pay you off, basically. And then what's next? You're going to want power, right? And you can't have it. See, what you have to realize is really what you really want is the power. You want the, you want the corporation and you can't have it. All you can have is what the work that you actually did. You didn't sit down and say, okay, we're going to build this country called McDonald's. Now, if your le- your ancestors made McDonald's, you can say, hey, well, my ancestor gave you the idea. We know this. We can prove it. Here's the documents where he got this, this um, patent and everything. He, he made McDonald's. He made the brand. He even made the golden arch. He made everything that McDonald's is. So therefore, we should have part of the corporation. Now, that would be just. Wouldn't that be just? That would be just. Not that you was working down on the grill. Flipping burgers on the grill and now you want the corporation. You won't write, like you patent the whole idea. You didn't patent the idea of America. Well, even though it's racist and where it came from, Right? And you really shouldn't want that, really. It's a brand. It's a brand. With all its blood and all its racism, it is a brand. And now minorities want to claim the brand and they didn't have a patent on it. You don't got a patent on it. You know who got a patent on it? All these white families. They the ones that have patents on on, on America.
that's who has that's who has the rights. And this is facts. Anybody disagree with me? Anybody disagree with my logic? Okay, so 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 it's a lost cause to think that all these families that's white that's still here that don't come out and show their face, you know. You don't see them, but they're there, okay? They represent all the corporations that you have here in America, all of them. All of those mostly are white families. You being, most of you being consumers, most of you being consumers, you you don't, um, and you're not used to being around white power. You, you, you're not used to uh, people telling you, well, yeah, my family owns uh, Wendy's. Yeah, my dad owns Kellogg's. White people are used to being around people like that. Because it's white families that run all these corporations. They can say, yeah, I met somebody that uh, their family would own Baskin Robbins. You don't hear black people talk about that. You know what you hear black people talk about? My dad's a district manager at Baskin, at Baskin uh, Robbins. And that's no disrespect. But you didn't make the corporation. You didn't find the brand. You didn't patent the brand. You don't have the brand patent. These white families have all these brands patent. That's the best way to tell you. All of them. Arby's. All these things you enjoy. They are patented per se by white families. And guess what you're doing at these corporations that are patented by white families? You're working at them. And so on the low, you feel that you're going to somehow overtake whole families that have whole corporations. Now you see what you're up against. And this, and you, and, and here's the next question. You think they're going to just lay down and let you have it all? <laughs> all these white families that got all these brands patented. You think they're going to just let you have all these brands that are patented? I'm just talking about black takeover versus established white already have to take it over. You think they're going to let you take over all them brands that they have patent and established? Patent and established. They're just going to let you come and take over. it, And that's what that would mean if you ruled over America. You would be ruling over all these white families that have patent brands. So what you need to hear in plain English is if you were to make it past racism, systematic racism, you would still have to deal with patent white brands of white families. And you can't win that war because it's just, it's a just entitlement. And you know, it's, this is part of why you have white entitlement. It's a byproduct of a just entitlement. That's a seven hour. White entitlement, the Karens of the world, you know where they get that from? Just entitlement of white families that own patent brands in America. So in other words, the white Karens walk into Starbucks, demanding her latte to be a little hotter. Her dad owns Starbucks. Now you see what I'm saying. You come in there, your family don't own nothing. She comes in there, her family owns Starbucks. She walks around like she owns the place. And so guess what? That mentality is cultural for white people. They own this. So they walk around throwing their weight around like they're entitled to this because of just entitlement. Oh, I'm not right about all I just said. I'm not right. I'm absolutely right. Add the absolutely to it. I'm absolutely right. Who 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 wakes up that arrogant for no reason? It's a perspective that they that they have not explained to you that you haven't you you call them Karen's. These are people who are influenced by white families who have patent brands here. And they just walk around entitled. 
And you call it white entitlement without realizing just entitlement of white families that have patent brands. No way. In a perfect world, everybody be humble, but how would you be as a culture if you got all these brands? Think about black people. You had all these brands. Think, hear me out now. You had all these brands. Let's just say if America was black. You had all these brands. Patent by black families. How you gonna walk around in the stores? Not now you are you. But think about other black people. Yeah, like man, get this stuff together, man. My black black people run this, man. Get this, get this together. <laughs> I can't even get a hot coffee around here. My people run this whole country. Get this together. That's how we walk around in the stores. Oh, I'm lying about it. If we have patent black brands that own this country, and this was owned by black families. With the arrogance that we already have now, let's just say up to date, the arrogance that we already have as a, a as a whole collective American community, you don't think black people walk around and say, hey, man, get this together, man. My coffee too hot. My people run this country. You don't think people will be saying that? You don't think people will be on the street saying that? And that explains why you got racist people all around and they because they go to the extreme. They go to the extreme. Shoot, this is our country. Who are these other people? We don't care about them. So now you're going to the extreme. Now you understand racism a little bit better. There you go. Now you understand a little bit better. Because it comes from people that's in military, all these different other positions, and they feel because of just entitlement, because of white families with patent brands, they walk around with an extreme mentality of forget everybody else. Hey, we run this. That's what some of the racism is, and you and you haven't had somebody articulate it to you properly. I'm a, I'm articulating I'm articulating it to you very properly, absolutely properly. Okay. So this explains why you could never win when it comes to this system you call America. Now here's the solution. Unfortunately, unfortunately, on this brand called America, we have 43 states of child marriage. Now, you see where I'm going with this. You got 43 states of child marriage. Now the brand is over. And this explains to you why I have been moved to, to tell you this. Because even the people that own these brands, these white families, they're not with that. And they didn't even know. And so unfortunately, it's the end of this brand. Even by their standards, the white families will be on my side and, and say, well, we must die because this our honor is too great to have a country that marries children. That's the end of our honor. That's the end of us. But see, you want to go the black way. You want to go the pro-black way. And that's why I'm trying to show you. Stop trying to act like I'm your little nephew. Stop trying to act like I'm your little nephew that don't know what I'm doing. Now you see what I'm saying. And that's how you've been acting. Like I'm your little nephew. Like I don't know what I'm doing. Because ain't no white families going to stand by and let you rule because you black. Because you just black and you just here and you just feel like you should just rule and you should just be. And that's how they mocking you. You should just be doing all this stuff and, and, and you, you, you just deserve to have it and be here. And, and you just that's how they mocking you, bro. Because they're going to show you all the paperwork. They're going to show you all the history of how their forefathers have patent brands to things that you're now trying to collect on. Now, if you want to go out in the bushes, go out in the bushes. Make your own brand, make everything. But when you start to come into corporations, now you see what I'm saying, that's owned by white brands and, and, and patent by white families. Now, see, you shouldn't even, you should know better than that. So now you see why you, what you've been fighting against. And see, some white people don't know how to articulate it as good as I do. They don't even know how to tell you like this. But now they like, yeah, that's right. That's actually how, how it is. <laughs> they 
They're like, yeah, that's actually very accurate. That's actually how it is. Listen to him. Listen to this guy. That's how it is. That's what they're saying. So you can realize, but see, here's the punchline, though. <laughs> you can, you got to realize you can't go your way. You got to go my way. Because you can't win with that pro-black stuff. I promise you, man. Listen. Okay. You got people that got a brand. You got, you got, you got all this culture. You got all this stuff. And you think that the culture is going to be what's going to make you, you, de- you deceive yourself making you think, making yourself think, oh, the culture is going to, um, that's going to help us get on top of America. You sure about that? You sure about that? Are you sure you're going to be just working the fields of a brand? Are you sure you ain't going to become a, just another worker working corporations and brands? You sure about that? You sure this is what it's going to take to rule over America? Bur- cultures and cultures and things. You think that's going to rule over all these white families? Because you're, what you're doing is you're breaking up the struggle. Boy, that's good right there. That's good. I got to do a video on that. You're breaking up the struggle. You over here talking about black power and all of this. And guess what? You can't even pull black people together to do anything because they're killing each other too much. So even you can't deliver black people right now. Don't you realize that? Don't you realize you can't deliver them right now? If you delivered them and took them where, what are they going to do? Kill each other wherever you take them to. I'm talking logic. I'm not talking about your good feelings. I'm not talking about your good feelings. You keep that for yourself tucked away when you go home and you have pillow talk with your lady. You keep that for there. I'm talking about logic. You can't take us nowhere. We're killing each other too much and we think it's cool on top of that, which means it ain't going to stop. If you think something cool, why it's going to stop? So the culture is actually feeding the cool of destroying black people. Oh, you don't want to hear that, do you? You don't want to hear that, do you? That the black culture is feeding the cool of black people being killed. Well, that's what rap music is doing. That's what the culture, the movies is doing. It's feeding the cool, the appeal of black lives being killed. But then you're talking about Black Lives Matter. So basically, you're not in a position to rule anyway. Neither are white people. And that's where it gets tricky. Those two right there can't rule in America. I can't speak for anyone else, but those two can't rule. Well, black people are killing each other. Okay, how are they going to rule? They're contradicting themselves. Their leaders are not competent enough to tell them what they need to tell them like I'm telling them. This is what a leader's supposed to do. It ain't a, who, you, who intelligence are you insulting? If I'm telling you you're wrong, you're wrong. It's not racism. I'm not, it has it racism. I'm telling you clearly you're wrong then you have racist syndrome, bro. You got racist down syndrome. You have racist down syndrome when I can't even tell you when you wrong. And we can't get nothing done that way. Let's look at it as a military. Let's look at it as a military. How are we going to get something done? When I can't tell you as a general when the, when they're wrong, how can we move as a unit, how you may put it, when I can't tell you when you're wrong? It can't work, man. And we can love each other all we want. If we build a real military, you think we're going to sit back and be biased about when you're wrong? So I'm going to just sit back and say, hmm, I seen him made that mistake, but you know, I love my people, so I ain't going to say nothing. And you know what you're going to have? A whole bunch of destruction and failure. Sitting up talking about, I ain't going to say nothing because I love my people. So you can't rule right now because you don't have any leaders that are competent enough to say things as they need to say it and walk away and don't care what nobody think about. It. Unless you have those type of leaders in the black community that is not trying to be your friend like some manager at a fast food burger joint trying to be friends with teenagers. If you don't, if you got leaders that's trying to be friends like a manager at a bur- burger joint trying to be friends with teenagers, you know the type. As long as you got them type of people leading over you, where they trying to be cool with everybody when it's impossible, you ain't fit the rule. And I got to do a video about that. 
you're not fit to rule unless you start correcting. Unless you start talking about, you want to talk about ruling and kings and queens, which is all fantasy right now. But if you want to talk about it in reality, I can talk to you about it. In reality, the only way you're going to be like that is you start, first of all, tackling black on black crime. That's the only way. Other than that, man, you, 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 how are you as a brand? How are you as a brand, collectively speaking? And you can be defensive all you want, but you know you can't go nowhere like that. How you gonna go in? How you gonna go international like that? Now you may have gone international personally, but I'm talking about collectively. Listen, man, I'm talking about community wise. Besides the culture, how can we have other countries say we'll take those black people over here if anything goes wrong in the white in the, in America? Boom. What if we need to have the black Africans shipped out of here? What if we need to have them shipped out of here? Who going to take black people? Huh? If white people start acting up and everything, what, what, where are we going to go? Oh, Africa. You sure about that? Huh? You sure we're going to be able to even go back? Are you sure we're going to even be able to go back now? They're going to look at it as a liability. Look at all these crazy people. We can't bring them here. That's how the Africans going to tell you. It ain't racism. No, it's not racism, bro. That's how Africans going to tell you. No, 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 no. You misunderstand, my friend. It's not racism, bro. Look at look at all the killing, man. Like, you think I'm going to bring that here to my country? It's not racism, bro. You're taking it personal. And so you so used to having racist syndrome when... when you need an African to tell you. You need an African to tell you how it is. It's not personal. I can't bring all of that here. That's a liability. That's crime. Why would I bring crime? When it's not here now and it's not my problem. Why would I do that? Because I love you so much. Well, you how you really show love to us? Like, how? Really? Here and there. Here and there. It's hit and miss. <laughs> it's hit and miss. It's here and there. Where's the real grand love for my country? Hmm? From the Americans and from the Africans in America. Where's the grand love? Where is it? Okay, so it's hit and miss, but I supposed to love you. I supposed to fully love you, but your love for us is great is hit and miss. Okay, you got a couple of celebrities that do what they do. We're talking about the community that we supposed to be taking in. The celebrities are good. They're off the streets. We don't need to bring them here. You're, you're, we're talking about the community. Where's their love for us? These are the real conversations, bro. This is the real conversation. So I'm just showing you, see, see that the whole punchline is you say, so what are we supposed to do then? What you're supposed to do is realize that you have a grand opportunity that even many white Americans have agreed with to collapse the brand of America in order to make a new brand where everyone is here collectively. But see what you do in ignorance. Now you see where you at? I know. I know. You're sorry. I know. See where you at is the whites are agree agreeing with me. And here you are still trying to fight, talk about black power. And you got a whole white family to fight. You got white families to fight. Ain't They ain't going nowhere. I'm not saying don't listen to them because they can educate you on your history. But when it comes to a struggle and we're talking about a real fight. Come on, man. That's nonsense. Because you got white families and white brands and all that's patent. And it's no way. It's no way you're fight for equality is going to make sense when their white families built that. So they're not going to give you that. All you, you might get some money, but you're not going to get the brands, bro. And that's all this country consists of. That's all a man should be fighting for is empires. And see, we never got one. We never got one here in America. We never got an empire. You know what white people got? Empires. And many of them inside the one American empire kingdom. You have many empires, sub empires in the empire. Okay. You making millions and millions of dollars. That's an empire. McDonald's is an empire. 
Yeah, you're looking at it. You're looking at it like goofily. But in reality, man, that turns into money. That turns into cold, hard cash, which ain't no joke, buddy. Yeah, you should be sm sm smiling around like it's all, it's, everything's all silly. And they laughing to the bank, bro. That's an empire. Do I need to show you more? How many more empires you need to see? All, everything around you, all this consists of empires. Cash don't rule everything around me. You know what rules everything around me? Empires. Cash comes and goes. The, 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 the economy fluctuates. The economy fluctuates. The economy fluctuates. Cash cream doesn't rule. Empires do. Because if empires can get loans from other places and the currency that's here can mean nothing. Cash don't rule in every, everything. It, it rules everything around people that are workers. Yes. That's the only way you're going to survive if you got the money. But for white people, it's all about empires, something that we never had. And so what you should have been fighting for, but it's a little too late now, what you have should have been fighting for is empires. Because empires is what a man lives, what an ethnicity, excuse me, a man but an ethnicity lives to create. As a community, you should not be fighting for rights. You should be fighting to make empires. White people are not fighting for rights. No, no, just look at what they're doing. Think out your side yourself. What are they fighting for? <laughs> White people fight for rights. They're fighting for empires. Something we never got around to doing because we was too preoccupied with fighting for rights. I'm just being 100. You, you, got, the, you got a dog in the wrong fight, bro. You fight for rights, and honestly, the white man is never going to see you as his equal. Get over it. It is it is what it is. You fight for empires, even though he don't see you as his equal, and he never will, no matter what you get. And that means also getting an empire, he still ain't going to see you as his equal. So why are you fighting for it? That's how he feels, okay? Ain't nothing you can do about it. What you do is you fight for empires. You fight and build brands and corporations, which you're way behind on. You got to pull your brand under an umbrella brand, which belongs to the white families. Any brand you get is under the umbrella of a white family. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Okay, then. So see, you still working for them. Long as your brand is under a white family, you're working for them. They're getting a the percentage. Yeah, you ain't know I was on this level, did you? I know I say the best for last. That's my Vanessa saying that Vanessa Williams song, say the best for last. <laughs> so see, you got to understand how this goes, man. You got to understand how this goes, you know, and so you can stop Going around thinking that your little powwows, your little secret powwows are going to do something. That ain't going to do nothing because you know what's going to happen? You're going to be faced with white families that are, that are not having it, bro. They're going, to, they're going to tell you in so many ways, our families built this, man. And see, what I've done, you tried to fight against me and now you got egg on your face because, see, I, I went around that. And, I, and I, I found a destructive fatal cocktail in the brand. And see, you on the outside trying to fight for something looking ridiculous. It's a hard job, but I got to keep doing it. That's why I'm doing it like I'm doing it. So now I got white people over here saying, yeah, they agree with me. And you still over here resisting. And you're not going to make it, man. You're not going to make it, bro. That's what I'm saying. You're splitting up powers. You're, sp you're splitting up the struggle. And I got to do a video on this. You're splitting up the struggle on foolishness. Okay. Educate your people at another time, in another place in time. And let's get on with this show. That's what I'm saying. You want to go educate, do that another time. It's too late to be doing it anyway. I'm like a political old dog. It's too late to be doing that anyway. 
<laughs> I'm like a political old dog, man. It's too late for all of that. What time it is now? What time it is now, man? Just come on, man, and go ahead and, and collapse this brand, bro. Collapse this brand. Collapse this brand and stop playing, man. All right? You talking about you? You got you got this going on, and they with it, man. They with it. You know why? Because man, they look at it for what how I look at it. You got a whole country, man, with child marriage, basically. You got child marriage in forty three states, right? Ain't nothing else to be said, man. And you sitting up here playing, talking about pro black this pro man. Come on, man. Come on, man. I listen, listen, man. That's a sub situation, bro. That's how I see it. That's a subdivision to what we doing. It is, man, because like it's gonna still clash with white families, bro. And they not they don't care nothing about what you're talking about, racism. They looking at it as their brand for what their families work for. And I found a fatal cocktail in the brand. And you still over there trying to go toe-to-toe with white families. It's not gonna work, man. And they riding with me, and you sitting up there still trying to be political, man, as far as them hood politics, and now you looking silly, bro. And it's just like the Joseph story. You try to put me into captivity and slavery, and look, I'm the one that's the deliverer. I'm the one delivering. They with it, bro. They with it because they know they wrong, man. They know they wrong, and there ain't nothing else to talk about, bro. Right, that's why I can talk openly about it. There ain't nothing happening. You know why ain't nothing happening? Because I'm absolutely right, man. I struck oil, man. I struck oil and I struck gold at the same time. You got 43 states with child marriage, man. Ain't nobody, listen, man, ain't nothing else to talk about. Why you're worried about your position in a in a in a brand with that. You worrying about your position in the brand. So you feel threatened. But it's a slave position still to me. Well, you're still under white families. You're still under white families. See, I talk reality, man. I don't talk reality. Huh? So you talking about your slave position under umbrellas of white families. That's what you talking about. That's all you talking about to me. When I'm trying to show you how you can get free from all those umbrellas, you can get free from all of that stuff. You can get free from all of those white families by collapsing this brand and those white families having to renegotiate the brand of this nation with other, co- other collective ethnicities. Now you see what I'm saying. This is the only olive branch you get, man. Because look, in reality, man, let's keep it 100. For all these all these black leaders that's running things and you think you're running things and all of this, listen, man, where can we take black people where they won't tear nothing up and kill each other right now? I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about your fantasy, your sci-fi fantasy for the future. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about right now. What can we take them? Where can we take them, man? Nowhere. You can't take them nowhere, man. They, look, they're killing each other, man. How, when you going to take them to? When they going to get it together, man? That's what I'm trying to say. I'm talking about today, man. I ain't talking about no fantasies. I'm talking about now. I'm talking about today and now and here and now. I'm like Nino Brown mixed with G-Money. <laughs> I'm both of them. I'm the, I'm the pretty boy shooting, 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 shooting. I'm shooting and everything, and then I'm coming around strong arm and everything. I'm G Money and hey, I'm G Money and uh and Nino. <laughs> hey, I'm hey, I'm both of them. See, what you need to learn is how to bring both forces together anyway. You need to learn, listen, you need to learn how to bring, you need to listen, you need to learn how to bring the villain with the hero. See, what I've learned in my own studies of war is that one cannot be the greatest he needs to be unless he is perceived as the hero and the villain. You can't be the hero. Look, look what the heroes did to your country. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do a history, a history. Let's do it. Let's study a history lesson. <laughs> look what the heroes of America did to your country. They got 43 states of child marriage. That's what heroes do. Boom. That's seven hour. They got hero. They got. They got. They got. They got forty three states of child marriage talking about their heroes. Well, where's the hero in that? That's what we want to know. So it takes someone that you perceive as a villain. Now you see where we're going with this. 
to bring you to the next level of living. Yeah, you perceive me as the villain, but I'm really the hero. But I had to play that position in order to get you to the next level of living. Even though, look, everybody that was white back in the times of MLK and Malcolm X were not racist. Do you think they had, do you think most of those people that wasn't racist back in those times had the discipline to not see Malcolm X as an enemy or a villain? In a perfect world, but many seen Malcolm X as the villain. MLK is the villain. Think about it. Now you see what I'm saying. And you have to be perceived as that. Not worried, not trying to adjust to look like the hero. Let me look like I'm the hero. Let me look like this. You can't worry about the perceptions of people. You have to be, you have to be considered the enemy to make things better. Boom. You think all these Yankees that worked in the Confederate flag in uh excuse me, you think all these Yankees that worked that war, went to war in the Civil War was considered uh allies of America by the by the Confederates? Do you think all the Yankees that fought in the Civil War were considered heroes to the South? We worked on this country all this time, and how can those how can those those Yankees sit up here and, and 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 not side with us at the end of the day, and not side with us at the end of the day? I mean, you know, you're taking it a little too far with all this freedom stuff. I mean, we're we're we're, we're going to war because of this. You're taking it. You're going too far with this. Therefore, you're 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 an enemy. You're a villain. You're a villain to all of this. You shouldn't you shouldn't go that far. I mean, at the end of the day, you know. They're slaves for crying out loud. Are you going to tear up this whole country for slaves? See, I have the ability to understand the logic of other people. That's something you haven't yet mastered yet. I have mastered it. You don't understand the logic of other people, then you ain't going to make it. You got to understand how other people think. Okay, you got to have a gift. I guess maybe I have a gift. Maybe I haven't mastered it. Maybe I have a gift. Better to say that. I'm just inclined to understand how other people think. And sometimes I don't care. <laughs> Even though I understand. <laughs> okay, so you think you think the uh, South in, in the Civil War didn't feel that the Yankees was a villain, like some dark villain trying to take over the country or doing something crazy in the country? They felt like you, we, we, was, we were all racist. Where, what's going on here? Not not too many eons ago, we were all racist, right or wrong. So all of a sudden, now you going this way, and we supposed to think you're a hero to this whole situation. You don't think somebody seen it like that? When everybody here, all these white Americans, most of them was racist? Oh, cool with the trade slave? The Atlantic trade slave? Cool with the Atlantic trade slave, most of the Americans was. Then the Yankees defended them later, right? Most Americans, the majority of us, right? Most, the majority of the white Americans were cool with the Atlantic trade slave, right or wrong. So you don't think the uh, the Yankee force was seen as some Darth Vader villain force? Of course they was. Because it wasn't the majority. But they had to play the enemy in order to get to the next level in life. Same thing. Ain't no difference. It's a civil war. Unfortunately, you're on the wrong side of that civil war. I know you think you're on the right side. You fooled yourself. You played yourself. Because, listen, <laughs> and for, for black people, you can't be serious because you're going to have to still deal with these white families. And I don't care how many white spokesmen come out and show you that they're on their side. They, they got to deal with white families, too. And how are you going to get rid of it? How are you going to get rid of all those white families that will look at it like, well, hey, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you know, we're not racist and we're not for these racist people and all of that. But, you know, we still feel like, you know, our families were work for all of this. And we just feel like, you know, business got to be the business. 
a brand got to meet a brand. I mean, you, you're, you're asking me to make you part of the brand just be, on the strength of you being black. We can make you work. We can give you money for the work you've done, but not the brand. And, and that's for the dusty old white family brands. That's what I'm talking about. That's the foundation for all of this. That is the umbrellas of all, over all of this. You can make brands now that, that incorporates all different type of ethnicities, but they're still under white families. And, and that's politically, and that goes into politics as well. There's white families all there. There's white families all everywhere. And there's no way you're going to beat that. Trying to fight, trying to do, trying to climb up the ladders and do all of this stuff. That's not going to work, bro. And see, the way has been provided. The way has been provided. But you want to, you want to, you got a fantasy story of how it should all end. That's the problem. You got a fantasy story on how you want it to end according to your biased perspective of your people when they're not ready to rule anyway. Black people are not ready to rule, bro. Because the community is killing too, it too much. They're not ready to rule. So guess what that means? It's all a fantasy. You're no different than the girl Lord, Lord made that song Royals. Live that fantasy. <laughs> okay, that's what you got going on. Living your fantasy. I'm not trying to live no fantasy, bro. What I'm trying to do is talk in realistic terms, like real generals and real soldiers from the times of old, from different ethnicities and different cultures. I'm just another leader, another soldier in this situation. And I'm showing you, I'm showing you, that's what I am. And I'm a prophet of God too. So I have the power to deliver through Christ Jesus. He empowers me to lead prophetically. Now that's something that you can't go and buy and you can't find that in the military. You can't find it because it's a higher level of warfare that gets a higher level of things done. You can't get this done in the military. You can't get it done. So the olive branch is collapse the brand and save the nation. Okay, you want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We can do that too. We can do that too. But that's you doing it, not me. I offered you the solution. I showed you the solution. I showed you who could not rule. Black people cannot rule, man. They're not, they may be able to do it in the future. That might happen in the future, but not right now, bro. Right now, it's too much killing and desperation and hostility in your empire, in the African-American empire. It's too much. And it's too many thirsty snakes. <laughs> Let's say you do start it. You don't know who to trust. Somebody sell out for a couple million dollars because they ain't had it ever in their life. And the brand hasn't been used to that kind of money. And so as soon as they start messing around with billions and millions and stuff, now you got betrayal. You got Judas's. In. That's coming, man. That's coming. That's coming when you're not used to it. When you, and you, when you're not used to being honorable. What they say is no honor among thieves, right? Okay. So, you know, right now we got to put that on the back burner. Now you see what I'm saying. That is backseat to what we need, what we have here now. Okay? What we have here now is we have an opportunity to collapse a 43 states child marriage brand. Militaries with it, police. I don't know any, any military against it. Anybody, any honorable military, any police. So now you see who I am. See, that's how God works, man. The one that you betrayed becomes the leader. That's just like Joseph. His brothers threw him in slavery. He rose up as the deliverer. It's no different. He, although I have my own story and my own free will. Okay? This is the only way it's going to go, bro. Because at the end of the day, it was me that did it like I did it. And if you don't agree with that part, I'm, I'm still the prophet, which means I have the ability to lead the people on a higher level because I can fight wars on a higher level than natural militaries. I got angels that can command wars on higher levels than military can. So I, they have to go with this way. It's like I'm a military within myself, basically. Oh, yeah, I got to do a video on that, too. A prophet is basically a military within a military 
with brand within himself. And that's that explains why you have to go his way. Just like Moses, Moses was a military brand within himself. The people had to go with Moses. They couldn't say, boy, that's good. They couldn't say, well, we don't want to, we don't like him. You know, he's he's already killed somebody. You know, you know, he's kind of sketchy. He's already killed somebody. Moses killed somebody. Did you know that? Moses is kind of sketchy. He killed somebody. He's a killer. But he got the job done, didn't he? He got the job done, didn't he? He was a military brand within himself. Under God, submitted to God in the kingdom of God. He was a military brand within himself. And the people had to go the way of this military because he was able to fight war on higher levels than the natural militaries and any natural force could. And that's how he and, and that explains why Moses, as a military brand, was able to defeat Pharaoh's army. So you can't just be picking and choosing and trying to find and being in a cornball trying to find the person that looks the most like you. Well, he doesn't look African enough. He looks like, you know, we want somebody that's about six foot three, you know, the tall, lanky type with long dreads, you know, hangs out with everybody. That's what we want. Well, that's not who God chose, is it? Boom, Al. That's not who God chose, is it? See, that's what you was waiting for. Keep it 100. That's what you was waiting for. You was waiting for the guy that's about six foot three. Dreads down to his waist, chocolate, no disrespect. That's what you was waiting for. All in the culture, all on the shows, all like Suge Knight say, all in the videos, <laughs> all on the, all on the, all on the, um, all them little podcasts y'all got, all the drink champs and all the, all the different podcasts, all them different podcasts. That's what you want. All on World Star. That's what you want. And that's not what God chose because what they doing for you, they ain't delivering you, are they? All the people on Drink Champs, they ain't delivering you, are they? That's what I'm talking about. See, you tried to make the deliverer, Moses, secular. You tried to take a spiritual dynamic and make it worldly. And it's not, it's not going to work. You're not going to find a secular Moses. Okay, then why haven't you found him then? With all this money that these guys got, how come you have not found a a, a, a a the deliverer, a deliverer that has brought you totally out? How come you ain't found it? Because you're looking at a spiritual percent a, a, a spirit, uh, excuse me, you're looking at a spiritual, a dynamic by secular perspective. Yeah, we're gonna get us a Moses. How? You know what you're talking about. You're talking about a prophetic brand that is a military that's able to fight wars beyond natural military. That's what you're talking about. How are you going to find that in a secular place? And everybody got to know their position. Listen, I'm not trying to outrank. I'm not trying to rank on anybody or trying to uh, be condescending on anybody, but everybody got to know their whole position. So I had to fight and struggle a little bit verbally to show you where I'm at. So that you could get it out your head and stop thinking that these money guys is the one that's going to do it. They don't have the, the, the prophetic military brand to fight military war besides the natural militaries. They can't do it. Boy, that's good. I got to make a video about that. They can't do it. And that's what you've been going with. Defecating on me. Yeah, defecating on me, right? And you've been going with the money guys and they're not able, they don't have a prophetic military brand that's able to fight prophetically on, on levels that's outside the natural to deliver you from this culture and this and from this government and from this white from these white families. These these money guys cannot deliver you from white families. These money guys that you've been been with, betraying me to be with. They can't deliver you from these white families. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. It's going to take someone that is a spiritual military brand, that is a prophet, that is that is the way. 
that is able to fight wars on higher levels to pull down all this stuff that's here. And if you don't have nobody like that, it ain't going to get done. Because it doesn't matter how much money they have. Look at all these other rich people. Even the white rich people can't do it. If they can't do it, how are they going to do it? If, white, if rich white people cannot convince America to let black people go, how else is it going to be done? It's plenty of white people with money. Just as much money as all your favorite entertainers. And they have the same goals or same perspective of trying to set you free. But how can they get it done with all these white families? And here this part. Here's where the iron bars of the iron castle is. They, they are just in having a position of entitlement over this brand called America. They're just for it. So how can you deliver? How can you? So you're going to meet with that iron castle and iron bars and you're not going to be able to get any further. That's why you got to go this way. And it's only been me. So just in case you think, oh, well, we can take that information and make it better. OK, but can you take a prophetic brand and military and have that with you, too? You got that, too? Because, see, the children of Israel couldn't go with somebody else. They had to go with Moses because Moses had the prophetic military, spiritual military within him that had left, that, that, that had angels fighting on higher levels of warfare that no one else could do. I'm never going to be perfect. I didn't tell you I was perfect. Moses wasn't perfect. Moses murked somebody. Moses caught a body. <clears throat> Moses had a body under his belt. Yeah, go check his, for all you, you religious people, go, all you conservative Republicans in America, go check the history. Moses had a body under his belt. Moses was a killer. Huh? Didn't stop that, didn't, didn't stop him from defeating Pharaoh. Probably would have been, some would say, gave, it gave him the aggression that he needed. <laughs> Some would say it gave him that aggression in, in, that he needed. And you still got, you still playing patty cake, patty cake, put them in the pan, roll them up, roll them up. That's what you're still doing. And I'm trying to show you what you got to do, man. So all that cute little uh, urban culture stuff, I'm trying to show you, man, that ain't going nowhere, bro. That's uh, Listen, man, listen, man. Come on, man. Are we talking reality or not? Because people quick to say, we talking about life. I'm talking about life. This is life. Ain't no way in the world you're going to get past all these white families. How are you going to get past all these white families? But with this information that I'm showing you of 43 states of child marriage, and keep in mind, because you might not think that's good enough. Although the whole culture, we haven't seen the whole country respond to this. Let's let's expose the whole country to it and then talk about it if it ain't going to work. Because you, you're nonchalant and skeptical right now, right? You're the type of person to sit back and listen to me talk and don't tell nobody else about this, right? So we can't go with you. So let's try it out on the whole community with all these crazy Americans and all these other people here. Let's see how they respond to it first before we before we make an assumption, which is making an ass out of ourselves. If this is this child marriage information is going to be the freedom or not. Let's try it out on the community. Why don't you do that first? Well, you really don't know now, do you? Because this could send this. Listen, you don't know what the effect this is going to have in the military and the police department. You don't know what this is going to do. You're being arrogant once again. Typical of the American. Quick to assume outcomes and don't really know, do you? I didn't assume to know. I know it's enough to do it. I know it's enough to do it because, no. first of all, no one knows, first of all, our whole culture is built on, our whole culture is built on child protection
Built on child protection, right or wrong. Built on being <sighs> protectors of children, right? So that's the whole culture, that's the whole community, that's the police, that's the military, that's everybody. Right? That's the entertainers, that's all these singers and rappers and everybody in between. Everybody pretty much uh, shares this common perspective of, of child protecting, right? We can agree with that, right? So you got child marriage over here. Now you see what I'm saying. And no one knows this information. Right. You got 43 states of child marriage and no one knows this information. Can you predict how that's going to clash with the community that didn't know we was child had child marriage here? Can you predict that? Can you predict that culturally to where this is going to go? You can't. Can you? You can't. Can you? You can't call that because some people going to want to die. I'm going to tell you, many people going to commit suicide because, look, you got a military. You got a military. You got a military that fights and will die for children. You got police that will die for children. You got thugs and gangsters that will die for children. You telling me, okay, people that will die for children, we all can agree on that, yes or no. Thugs die for children, gangsters die for children, pimps, maybe. <laughs> um, military die for children. Police even some politicians and community for the most part. You telling me when they find out collectively child marriage is here, they're gonna wanna they're gonna wanna and that's military included. Keep that in mind. You think they're gonna wanna obey this brand any longer? You think all these white families gonna defend a country that has somehow slithered in 43 states of child marriage? You think they're gonna defend that brand anymore? You think they're going to defend that brand anymore? See, your problem is, and I can still sense it, you think you can do it better. See, what you're leaving out, though, and this is for some of the black community, you think you can do it better. Because by nature or by culture, you are competitive people. So what you think naturally is you can do it better. Let me help you with that. You don't have the prophetic army and the prophetic military and the prophetic uh, military brand that is behind you with spiritual works to prove it. Not just assumption, not just what your grandma and family said about you. Spiritual works to prove it that can fight wars on higher levels to fight higher than natural militaries to truly deliver you. You don't have no one to do that part. See, it's not just the information. See, Moses said, let my people go. God said, let my people go. That's words, right? That's what God said, right? He's the messenger, right? So it's not only the messenger or the concepts that you release as the messenger, you also have to have the prophetic brand military that is able to fight through all these American forces in spiritual ways beyond our imagination and beyond our perception that's able to fight beyond our, our mind to conceive, able to fight way beyond into things that we can't see and able to do that and deliver us properly. I know you don't believe it's believable, do you? But yet it's being done. That's why it's all the collapse is already happening. That's why you have COVID-19, because they tried to fight me as a military brand, which is a which is a sub brand in the kingdom of God. And they tried to fight me and wind up fighting the kingdom of God. Listen, ain't nothing shaky and funny here, man. And I know you want it to be so bad. You know why you why you know you know why you want to? Because it's a fighting of brands, brands that's under white families. <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't care how black you think you are. You are under a white family. And you might say that's okay, but <laughs> you ain't going to deliver your people. How are you going to deliver your people when you're not? Listen, how are you going to deliver your people when that white family empire is not going anywhere? It's not going to cooperate with you. It's not going to share its power with you. It's not. I promise you that. And you can you can maneuver, you can shuck and jive, and you can show me this and that and what you're doing, and I still can show you a whole host, a cloud of hosts of white families 
that hovers over this whole community that is not going to share their family's power with anyone. And this explains, hear this part, this explains why, here's the punchline, this explains why Donald Trump was even placed in office. Make America white, uh, 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 make America great again. That's make America white again. It was all for white families. You thought it was racism. It was for white families. Make America, make America great again was all was a call to white families. That's what it was. Where the white man and white families are up here and y'all all are submitted to all the patent white brands that are in this country. So the only way, the only way you're going to be free is that you realize it's a lost cause thinking that you're going to go some way, have these people take you out and bring you into something and all these white families and all this spiritual wickedness that's going on. You got to remember it's demonic spirits also of racism and, and, and strongholds and spirits that are against you. And sometimes this is why black people think that they're chosen people because these spirits keep picking on them. These spirits keep picking on them. And they don't know why. It's like, why is these spirits keep picking on us everywhere? Why is these spirits keep playing with us? You feel me? And it make you believe it, it can make some people get gassed and start believing, you know, a little higher than they should believe. Right. But they have a perception that they're being picked on by some some higher forces some others some and and we don't know what the plan was or is all we know is we do know for sure i can't say that it's for black people to rule i can't say that for sure all i know is it ain't gonna happen unless you realize unless you go this way away from that brand and take advantage of the information that i'm talking about of 43 states thinking and you don't do it because you think your brand is in danger and I promise you, it's already in danger. It's already in danger anyway. Well, you can't predict what's going to happen with COVID and all of this. See, you need to realize you need to position yourself while you got a chance. Because you cannot predict what all of this is going to do. You can't. You can't. President Biden, didn't he just uh didn't he just got have some cancer skin cancer situation? The heat is listen, the heat is 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 turning up, bro. The heat is turning up. The heat is turning up. And you got to stop trying to make me little brother and little nephew, bro. I'm not little nephew. See, in your community, a man my age, you want to call me little nephew and little bro and all that and all this and a little nigga. I ain't no little nigga. That's what they say in the culture. Oh, that's a little nigga. I'm a little nigga. Yeah, I didn't go your way, but I'm still not a little nigga. I ain't had the money you had, but I'm still not a little nigga. I got you, man. Listen, man. I got this thing wrapped up, man. And see, you stuck in this this syndrome of thinking you the big dog. That's what that's what the problem is. Yeah, let me call it how it is. You think you the big dog, but you have no spiritual plan. You have no spiritual deliverance in you. You cannot do it with money. If you could do it with money, you're gonna clash with other white people families' money. They got way more money than you. So how you gonna do it? How you gonna make us all equal? That's what we're trying to say. Not just black people. How can you make us all equal from these white families with your money? They got money. So what you going to do? You got to have a spiritual deliverer. And you don't want to accept it. You don't want you because you wanted your leader to be a rapper, some famous rapper with millions of dollars. You wanted to be some 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 pro black leader with millions of dollars. And it didn't fit your narrative. That's that's it right there. It didn't fit your narrative, and now you got your hands crossed on my. Oh, I, I, I ain't, I ain't with. Nah, listen. You go look in the Bible, and God always picks the people that you least expect. Because if I would have been the person you expected, if I would have looked and been and behaved and did everything the way you expected me to do it, I wouldn't have made it. Because I would have been too accepted by you, and I would have been caught up too much in the limelight, like the rest of these. Singers and rappers and entrepreneurs, they too caught up to do be doing fasting like I'm doing. Why would they be fasting? You kidding me? They can go down to a sushi bar on anytime. They got they got, look, they got cooks and 
cooks that can cook them hamburgers any time of night. Why are they going to be fasting? So they couldn't get it done. They can't get the spiritual part done. That's what I'm trying to show you, man. They can't get it done. They're more wrapped up in, in, in spirituality that they don't even know about. It's going to come to light, though. They're going to see. And they're going to have a choice either to go with light or darkness. They're, they're, too, they're too deep in it. They don't even know they're in it that deep until they really start to live a Christian life, a spiritual life. Now you see how much you wrapped up in. Oh, man, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Now you see all the principalities that's around you. Now you see all that's going on for what it is. But you can't see that. And I'm listen, I, and listen, it's, it, this is an in general conversation and issue. It's not just for one person. It's not just for just for uh, a, a certain type of person either. We will only be delivered by spiritual means. This is how it works, guys, because with money, you can't win. They got too much of it. White people say, well, we got just as much money as them. We know how to beat them with money. You kidding me? We'll get money from different countries if we have to. You don't think they'll draw on different money from different places? Now, see, that's where they beat you. You're not yet worldwide as you want to be, right? Come on, man. To where you can defeat the American brand by money. They can go worldwide with this, man. And collapse you as a brand as a black family, as a brand, they can collapse you with other collaborations of other families in other countries. Now, am I right or wrong? If all else fails, they can go get other countries on you. And that's just the white families, not even the racist people yet. So, like I said, now you see, I am the man. And I'm supposed to be aware of who I am. I'm not arrogant. I'm telling you, I'm showing you. I'm showing you. I'm well aware. I am not. For Let me tell you people this before they, we go any further. I am not under. I do not lack self-esteem. Okay. I'm trying to be humble. Uh, if anything, if anything, I'm trying to be humble as I possibly can without selling myself short on who I really am. I'm trying to show you without being prideful. But because of your arrogant as a community, I have to like, I have to wrestle with you and wrestle with your arrogance. That's the best way to put it. Boy, that's good. Because of your arrogance, I got to wrestle with it. I got to show you, I got to, I ain't got to speak your language, but I got to wrestle with your language. Boy, that's good. Until you understand who I am. And it's all real at the same time. That's what I'm, I'm that's what that's what I'm trying to show you. It's no other way, man. And listen, listen, while we're on the subject of seeing who I am, let's get this understood. I'm in my right mind. I'm sound of mind. This is my level. You it's a spiritual level that you do not. I'm way up, way, way up beyond that building that's in Dubai. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up higher than that. The Khalifa building in Dubai. I'm, I'm up higher than that. And, and so, so it's easy for you to judge my mental health, when, but you ain't on this level spiritually. That's what I'm saying. You don't know what kind of demonic spirits I deal with. You don't know what kind of principalities I deal with on this level. You think I'm, I'm arms reaching. I'm not. I'm way up there, bro. This explains why I can't do what y'all do. I can't do. I can't go where y'all go. I can't go outside and do what I want to do like you do. I can't do that. That season is over. That season is over. I had my little fun. You know what I mean? I had my little time in the sun. Now it's time to get to work. That's what bosses do. You got your time, you go to you go on the vacation, now it's time to get to work. Time to get back to work. I'm not running scared for nobody. I'm back to work. As you can see. And I'm showing you. I'm showing you, man. You can't do it that way with money. You how you know is they're gonna beat you with money. They're gonna beat you with money. That's how they're gonna do it. Okay? So stop, so stop trying to watch my every move and my every thought. That's for the lames and the suckers. Stop trying to watch my every move and every thought. You don't even have a concept of what you're studying. 
You're studying someone that's on a level that's way beyond your whole country, and you're sitting up here like cornballs playing around with something that can deliver the whole country. That's why you're in spiritual danger. Because, listen, man, ain't none of y'all perfect anyway, man. Y'all got child marriage. How dare you even try to find out what's on somebody's mind, morally speaking? That's for any of you. That's for any of you, including people that I know and people in my family or anybody. How dare you try to worry about my morality when you got a whole country with 43 states of child marriage? I could care less what you think about my morality. I'm getting it done. Nobody worried about the fact that Martin Luther King Jr. was cheating on his own woman, on his own lady. Do you do you look at him any less? Do you look at him any less than, than, than you before you knew that? You look at him the same way, right? Even though some of you may esteem yourself as better than him because you never cheated on your wife. So some people say, well, I was, I'm better than Martin Luther King Jr. That's for people who say, well, you will never be a Malcolm X. You will never be an MLK. Well, some people feel they're better than Malcolm, Martin Luther King Jr. Because they never cheated on their wife. And they never cheated on their wife in front of the whole country, making a fool out of her, some would say. Yeah, that's the real facts, bro. That's what I'm saying. And how this works in the real world while we're on the subject of a uh, Greater and who's greater than this? It always works where we're constantly getting greater. So there has to be somebody greater than Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr., don't you think? 40, 50 years later, so nobody should be better than them? For that, that, that just makes sense as far as life. But you are the type of community as Americans, you, you, you hold your greatest who you decide to worship. Nobody can be better than that. And life doesn't work that way. The universe doesn't work that way. The universe is progressive, which means somebody's going to progress the works of MLK and Malcolm X. And you ain't ready for it. You ain't ready for that. No, you ain't ready for it because you, you feel in your mind can't nobody be better. God don't see it that way. God don't see it that way. God's system doesn't work like that. God's system works in, in progression. Which means there, are, oh, there has to be somebody better. But since you have a cult type of culture who you decide who is going to be your best rapper, who you decide is going to be your best this or that, and you ain't in the universe where there's constant progression, progression, you make a cult around people and you make a culture around people that you think are your gods and your greatest. That's, the, that's for the African-American culture as well. Yeah, that's for you too. You, you've already made up your mind who your greatest is. Nobody can surpass what MLK and Malcolm X do. Ask them. Go ask them. Go ask them. They don't even allow nobody to be compared to them. But yet in reality, when you look at their morality and you look at the situation, MLK cheated on his wife. That's adultery. So by spiritual standards, he's already, you see what I'm saying? In a fallen state, some would say. But he still got the job done. That's what I'm trying. That's my very greatest point I'm trying to make is he got the job done. And that it's all about progression, right? It's all about progression, which means the universe, God, I'm going to say how it is. God is going to progress the world regardless if you're ready for it or not. Well, we, we well, ain't nobody better than Malcolm X. 50 years later, nobody better. Now you, now you sound silly because that's what they would want. You think Malcolm X would be saying, well, I don't want nobody to be greater than me for 50 years after me. You think MLK would be saying, well, you know, nobody should be better than me. No, that's arrogant rappers. MLK is not going to say nothing like that. That's, that's hip hop. 